Let's talk about being offended. Now, offense is subjective. There is nothing that is objectively offensive. It doesn't correlate with past trauma or your particular identity category or anything like that. It's very unique to you. I know European Jews whose family was killed in the Holocaust and they laugh at Holocaust jokes. And I know Christians that get deeply offended by Holocaust jokes. So it's very unique and we need to recognize that. So if you offend somebody, I think it's appropriate to apologize. I've done videos before on microaggressions. Microaggressions are a very real thing. Don't try to be offensive, okay? If you're trying to teach people lessons by being offensive, it doesn't work. Trust me, I'm a teacher. I know how to teach people lessons. Don't offend people to try and teach them. It will have the opposite effect. So try not to offend, try not to be offended, but you have to risk it if you're going to think, if you're going to converse, if you're going to test out ideas, that is the risk you take. And we all take that risk as soon as we start venturing off and challenging ideas and thinking, but that is the risk. And we all get offended by something. We all have our trigger points. But I do want to say, don't be offended on behalf of. And looking for ways to be offended or be emotionally hurt is a bad approach to life. There will be plenty of things to offend you and hurt you. Don't go looking for them, they will find you. But in 2021 culture, it is valuable to be offended. If you are offended, then you are held up in a lot of circles. If you are offended, then you feel a lot. Therefore, your perspective is more valuable than someone who is not offended. But that is not true, and that is not a sustainable way to run our society. When you aim to be offended on behalf of someone else, it gets really murky really quick. I have watched minorities view something that was racially insensitive and say, well, I'm not offended, and then have like white liberals say, well, you should be, I'm upset, you should be upset. You know, like the concept of you should feel this way because of these identity markers, that is crazy. We knew that was bad decades ago. You don't have to think a certain way because of your skin color or who you're attracted to or anything like that. You should think like you. But I know why people are offended on behalf of, it's because they are empathetic. So why do we have empathy? Let's dive into the biology a little bit. The reason you have empathy really is to care for an infant and to care for your fellow tribe members because Homo sapiens are pack animals, just like chimpanzees in a troop. So when a baby cries, you feel empathy. You feel the pain of that child, so you go and take care of it because babies cannot take care of themselves. Now, apply this to what I was talking about. The people who are standing up and being really aggressive, really mad, and really offended on behalf of marginalized communities, black or brown people, LGBTQ, whatever it is, your brain is treating them like an infant saying they can't protect themselves, I am going to protect them like a mama bear. I mean, doesn't it have that feeling sometimes when you watch these videos online and stuff? It's very like mama bearish. It's like, you do not say that to this marginalized person. I got this, let me handle this. Now, historically, that has been true. There have been situations where say, African Americans were not able to stand up for themselves. They were not given equal rights in our government, in the judicial system, they were not given any kind of platform, and they needed white individuals who had those platforms to stand up and push for it. William Lloyd Garrison, Harriet Beecher Stowe, John Brown, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't think that's the way it is today. Today, everyone, all of the people of marginalized communities, you have a voice and you are given platforms. So I wanna say to the people on the extreme left who are stepping up and defending marginalized communities. I know that that is your role. I know that that is an important role historically to give a voice to those without a voice, but you've gotta be careful not to co-op and steal the movements and perspectives and voice of those very people. Some things aren't your fight.